Six under each other will be perfect. Okay, you got it. <laughs> All right. Are you a boner guy? Cuz. Cuz a roo. Cuz a roo. Slap a rooney. It's showtime. <laughs> A W A T P. A W A T P. Hello, Rubber Dixon Cousaroos. Welcome to the very first ever video version of Who Are These Podcasts? We're experimenting here with my friend Casey Armstrong, former producer of the Howard Stern Show. Casey, how have you been, my friend? Good to see you. Carl, I got to tell you, I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, I love your podcast. And uh, I have heard so many of them, and I am tickled pink to be here with you and that you would let me do a show with you. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, so just uh, peek behind the curtain real quick. Casey actually reached out to me and said, wow, I'm watching this documentary on Paris Hilton, This is Paris, which is available on YouTube. 20 million people have watched it already, and uh, I don't know why, but... He said, I want to make fun of this, but we got to do this together. And I agree. <laughs> I appreciate you bringing me into the fold on that because I watched this documentary, as did you. And wow. It, 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 is, uh, it is a Pulitzer. I'm going uh, to inbound to Jordan here. Okay. This is how the thing starts off. This will get everybody into it. Yes. This is Paris. Paris Hilton. This is Paris Hilton. How many voices do I have? Oh, that's pretty good. That was your Rich real little. voice. This is Paris Hilton. <laughs> this is Paris Hilton. No, this is. <laughs> no, this is. This is Paris Hilton. <laughs> Paris f***ing Hilton. <laughs> this is Paris f***ing Hilton. Oh, my God. So I guess that's to show us that she has a personality, right? Uh, uh, what kind? Well, so that's the interesting part is that she goes on to explain that she doesn't even know who Paris is anymore because she's been playing a character her entire life. This, hey, this whole know, thing is bonkers. I know. I know. I, I, you cursed. Um, I think you stubbed your toe and yeah. I was on the floor. It was so funny because you you cursed. It's uh, incredible. It's so funny when someone curses, right? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's hilarious. She goes, this is Paris. This is Fucking Paris Hilton. Like, oh, good one. Okay. Knee slapper. Come on. Good one. Every, everyone's <laughs> giggling at that one. Really good stuff. So that's how this, this starts off. Now, I'm going to give a quick spoiler here. What we're going to witness for the next hour or so as we go through this is Paris feeling sorry for herself. Every 100%. bad thing has happened to a woman who was born into a $350 million family that owns all of the Hilton hotels. And she had it really rough growing up. And even since she's been an adult, it's just terrible. It's, it's really tough. She's traumatized, as you'll see in this clip here. Something happened in my childhood that I've never talked about with anyone. I still have nightmares about it. I wish I could bring like a camera into my dreams and like show you what it's like. It's it's terrifying. And I relive that every night. I experienced it and to this day I'm still traumatized. And I think the only way to have these nightmares stop is to do something about it. So that's kind of a tease at the beginning of the doc. They're going to get into that later. But she wants to let you know that she has these night terrors. And this is really affecting her ability to make billions of dollars, these night terrors that she has. She wishes she could bring a camera into her dreams, Casey. That, that, that was so deep right there. <laughs> that was a deep, that was a deep uh, sentence. But, um, I mean, look, no one uh, goes through life uh, perfectly I mean, Carl, uh, I'm sure you had some setbacks. Sure. Did you did you hire a multi billion dollar um, uh, camera crew and uh, and just make it about you? Is the production you on this it? is ridiculous because 
She's trying to say, woe is me. My life is so terrible. I went through this trauma as a child that I still haven't gotten over. And it doesn't really come through all that well when we're going on vacation with her and we're going to Korea and <laughs> Switzerland and she's so DJing true. in front of 30,000 people. And it's it's like this weird thing. It's like she's crying in one scene and then she's the belle of the ball in the next. I'm going, what am I supposed to be thinking with this woman right now? I'm having a hard time. Dude, and um, uh, you know, I know this would be perfect because me and you are right on the same page. I mean, how so far? Look, I feel bad for anyone when anything bad happens, but so far, uh, are you moved? Something bad happened to good people? Are you are you mad? Well, what I'm going to document here for you, Casey, is that everything that's bad has happened to her. She brought upon herself. And that's the thing that she never figures out. She goes through this whole thing. She reunites with the other people who were teenagers when she was, who were traumatized, and none of them fucking figure out the actual lesson here that this all could have been avoided if they had any type of responsibility. And uh, oh, Why should they? They never grew up with any of that. They right. never had to. They never had to develop anything. I, I, I mean, I, I could be a, a, a billionaire, and I'm very stupid. Uh, if I had that much money, I'd just I'd, I'd, I'd dump it into a blue chip or something like that. I, right. I make money. I mean, they didn't they have no idea what the rest of the country goes through. Oh, they flaunt it. They flaunt the fact that they have no idea what the rest of the country goes through. <laughs> when she's when she's on there and she's going, I have 26 product lines, and it's just it's just so much work that I have to do, and I'm a I'm a brand, the Paris Hilton brand, and I have to keep it up. It's like, uh, honey. Do you know how many people would kill for that lifestyle, having 26 fucking product lines that are international? Oh, woe is you. That's terrible. It's so true. And you guys, uh, you know what douche chills are, right? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 90% of the audience, you will at some point during this program, if not just when I speak, but you will get douche chills. Douche chill is actually my DJ name, Casey. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> is that right? Uh, so this is, I'm not a DJ. This is a clip that you wanted me to play, and this is her from a little kid. They have a lot of video footage from when they were kids. Uh, imagine that, these uh, these super wealthy people in their okay, mansions. This was, this was the video one, not much audio. Yeah, so this, yeah, the not much audio here, but she has a pet bunny rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you want to, I want to hear your thoughts, and then I'll set it up. Oh, I thought it was interesting. I would not have caught it. Because it's what happens happens off frame, and I was impressed that you picked up on this. Well, anytime an animal is hurt, uh, I have Catropolis back there. W one day I'll tell you about it. I save cats. I I uh, I, I love uh, animals and uh, I love people too. But you can tell a lot about somebody when they're a kid and how they treat animals. Sure, right? Serial killers. Uh, every single one of them. They're mean to animals, and that that is. Number one, you see that happening. That is somebody that you don't want to uh, screw with. They're going to be a bad person. It means so, they're a psychopath. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> sociopath, psychopath, yeah. narcissist, whatever it may be. But in this clip you're going to see, this is why I pulled it, and it's not much audio, but she takes this rabbit, and she's holding it, and there is no responsibility. There is no parent saying, hey, don't hold, that, don't hold the rabbit like that. You might drop him. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and she drops this poor rabbit and it was just like she dropped the milky bar into the uh into the garbage or or you know she she dropped a, a paper cup that had no water in it just yeah she had see how disgusting this is all right yeah let's let's check this out You look a little bit like uh, your mom. The look so, that she's, she's like, oh, shit, I just dropped this rabbit. She was holding it up over her head. And she was smiling. And she's smiling, <laughs> and she just drops the rabbit. And by the way, rabbits don't want to be held by people. That's not a comfortable <laughs> thing for a rabbit. Especially not with one hand. <laughs> right. My God, I saw this. And I was like, how special do you think you are, and how much better are you than a rabbit? I mean... Although uh, I have to say that that scene reminds me of Steve Martin's cat juggling, which actually is quite <laughs> hilarious. So I'll give uh, that. We're not talking about like laser cats or anything stupid like that. Look, as, as long as you're not hurting. Uh, but when it said a lot 
Carl. It said yeah. a lot when, when she was trying to screw with the cat. And all of a sudden, of course, when you screw a cat with one hand or a rabbit or, or shake, shake, a, a, I mean, a, a rabbit yeah. with one hand and it goes flying from, I guess, three and a half feet. That you should be concerned, not yeah. smile. Yeah, the mom's not even concerned. The mom's still just like, yeah, but aren't you cute? She's got way too much makeup on. She's nine years old. Oh, she's and a uh, they created a monster. This is her talking about what it's like to be an influencer. Oh, oh yeah, this is fun. <laughs> this is a longer clip. over 250 days a year all around the world. This is starting up with the what was me yeah. stuff. All right. yeah. I don't need to bring every single one of these. What country am I going to and I should find out? Bria, London, Paris, Monaco, Geneva. None of those are countries. That's right. <laughs> Copenhagen. What? All of these brands are always sending me clothes because they want me to post about them. A different outfit every couple hours of the day. That's a part of being an influencer. I've never been photographed in the same thing twice. Half an hour to pack all of this. And she, and she drops her bag. No. Like, like the worst thing ever. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Oh, I, you, you expect me to put all of this shit in a bag within 30 minutes? What are you, nuts? How am I supposed <laughs> to pull this off? Where Where are my assistants? And by the way, I one of the things that I noticed in this is there's very little B-roll of all the people who are helping her out around her mansion. You don't see those people too much in this. <laughs> but you know she has a whole staff of people who are helping her out. Oh, my God. Like, man. for one I, second know. here or there, all of a sudden there's, like, a normal-looking person next to her. And I'm like, well, oh, oh, okay, I know that. That's the maid. I know yeah, that yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we might uh, have, uh, you know, reality here. But uh, Paris, uh, you know, uh, there are people that, uh, you know, not even uh, for their job on the weekends, but you might dig a hole or something like that. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's not easy to do, and it's tiring. Um but you got to do it. You have to, you have to pack clothes, and you're throwing them down in anger. I know. We got to talk. Let me just speak for the little guy here, so that Paris understands how we live our lives. The other day, I'm trying to get on a Zoom call for an important meeting, and my lawn guys show up, and they're edging and they're trimming, they're making all this noise. I'm like, guys. Can you come back and do my lawn at a better time? It's more convenient for me because it's just making too much noise right now. I don't know what else is in this clip, but I want to play it. Okay. No. And I need sunglasses with every outfit and purses. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. I need to ride in a car every day, and all I have is gowns. If I, if I had to die for every time my wife said that. Oh my God, all I packed was gowns. I forgot that we might actually want to go out to the pool one day or just hang it's out. It's for a week, Carl. It's for a week. I, I, this is, this is, this is, I love she when is she living in hell. I love when she freaks out. She's like, at her wit's end, she's just like rummaging through all these outfits. And she goes, oh my God, I need sunglasses and a purse for each one of these two. What the fuck am I going to do? I'm way behind. How are we going to pull this off? Change the flight. <laughs> Wow. So true, man. She's nuts. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets man. a lot worse. But what I love about this is that this is all Paris sanctioned. Everything you're seeing here, Paris is like, yep, that's cool. That's cool. It's not like someone's doing a hit job here. She right, just doesn't right. realize how crazy Carl, she is. She's like, hey, maybe if people see this side of me yes. and see how hard my life is, yep. maybe they won't be so mean and and think that I'm uh, you know, I was born with a silver spoon and and think that I'm uh, you know, I'm so um blessed. Well, she mentioned being an influencer and how hard that is for her. And I want to point out, in this documentary, they say that she was the original influencer and that she invented the selfie. Oh, and okay. I just want to say, like, all right, so Eddie Van Halen invented two-hand tapping on a guitar. Paris turned the camera around. So there's a lot of talented people. <laughs> That's Very awesome. impressive. That is so good. And it's a great point. And it's that's exactly how vapid and disgusting yeah. it is. Oh, yeah, for no, her she's taking it. full credit for our everything we but hate about society. <laughs> everything that we hate about our society, she's taking credit for. Instagram influencers and selfie sticks. She's like, that's all me. Like, okay, all right. <laughs> you can have it. 
Uh, this is her in Korea, and uh, wow. you'll you'll see what she has to deal with when she's traveling the world as a brand. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Who are your friends there? I don't know. The chick over there next to the other thing. Yeah, the blonde one and Mo. Uh, get, 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 get them over here. They're my friends. I got to tell you, though, when I fly, and now I, I do fly commercially. I, I, I don't have private jets. But when I show up at the airport, it does look exactly like this. It is a it, it, mob it scene for Carl from Who Are These Podcasts. So I get it. It's a lot of pressure. You want to look good. You want to have the right sunglasses on. But, but, but did you bring the sunglasses? Because you were going oh to be, be in a car all week. You didn't the have sunglasses. Uh, any of the sunglasses. <laughs> Got the wrong purse. Fuck. Uh, so not long after that scene is a scene that I think you and I both enjoyed. It's where, so she's still in Korea. And I don't know, she's being transported or something. She drops thousands of dollars all oh over the place. <laughs> just thousands of dollars. Like, oh, whoops. This just fell out. Guys, watch this, and you're going to be disgusted. And I have a question to ask you after yeah. this, uh, Mr. Carl. But okay. Th- <laughs> Hold on to that thought. I do want to point out that when you sent me this to clip, you said, uh, this is where cash falls down, and then she meets a retard. So I thought that made me laugh out loud. And uh, <laughs> You tell me what you think when you see this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was going to be your question. Okay, let's check it out. <laughs> oh, well. Oops. Oh, why, why does she need U.S. currency anyway? It just fell out of She's her, in uh, Korea. Orifice. She's thousands of dollars all over the floor. Enough cash. Excited fan, right there. Yeah, but man, <laughs> look, you know, uh, we we, we both. You, you're in a band, uh, you know. You're you're talented with music, and yeah. I, I assume that you have a lot of idols that are musicians. Sure. Would you ever act that way uh, to meet, um, say, a Mick Jagger or a, uh, you know, someone like uh, Jimmy Page or or something like that? Someone who is a a legendary classical. I would only uh, act that way if I met John Lennon now. Like, whoa, 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 <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> That's how I would be, act that you'd, way. You'd be screaming and then putting Purell on your <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, she but, acted but, like she just fucking met someone who was undead. The way that yeah. she was. All right, let's hit that again because that, that's I, I, pretty fucking I, I, funny. I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. If I met Christ, I don't know if I would say that. <laughs> I know. I think you'd be able to compose yourself after a minute or two. I'd be like, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> really am. <laughs> Uh, so when I'm pausing the video, I just need to know what's going on. Can you guys t- see the paused video up here? Uh, what, what I'm seeing is I, I still got the, uh, I, I see me and you, and then, um, uh, the, the screen of, uh, the end of the scene, Okay, but I need to, uh, now I see you. Yeah. I need to ask you, yeah. um, what does she do that would measure that type of response? What are you saying? That you're not a huge fan of Paris Hilton? Is that what you're trying to say? No, I am. No, I, I mean... Um, <laughs> what does she do? She, does she barely do? sucks a dick when she's 18 on the internet. That's that's how I know Paris Hilton. What do you mean? What does she do? Hey, I, have you heard of YouTube? Because there are about uh, 10 uh, uh, billion other videos that are probably better than that one. That's true. But why are these people waiting? Who are they? What are they waiting for? What, what did she do that's so... What did she do that me and you can't do besides, you know, be born with a million billion dollars? This is a world that we don't understand. And that's why we enjoy watching this video, because precisely my thought, too, when I'm watching this video and I'm seeing the way people respond to Paris Hilton, because I always just think like, 
oh, well, Paris is a celebrity because she's a celebrity for being famous or she's famous for being a celebrity or, you know, whatever that looks like. I don't know what she's talented with. I don't know why anyone would care about her. And then you do watch her in her life and her lifestyle. And you go, holy shit. No wonder she has such a big head. There are literally thousands and thousands of people who are excited to meet Paris Hilton. <laughs> okay. Did you know anyone in your life? No. That grew up that way. Anybody? No. No, me neither. Um, so this is her when she's just having a fun night out. This might be in Korea still. I forget. She's just having a fun time, and then she's told, listen, Paris, party's got to end. you got to do hair and glam tomorrow at 8 a.m. Hey, Carl, I want you to watch something. <laughs> yeah. When uh, the heavy comes down on her, watch when she gets to um, – realize that in about 12 hours she has to wake up at noon and she has to have her hair and she has to be dressed i want you to see how that reaction fits here this is devastating to her she can't believe <laughs> she lives this life she doesn't know how, how she's gonna manage <laughs> Dancing around in balloons with a teddy bear. Ready, eight a.m. No, not a heavy. Yeah, now he comes ready in. At ready at eight. Hair and glam. Ready at eight, and she sinks. You would think you. She was just told the grandfather died. Yeah. Oh yeah. She just sunk into the balloon pit on both knees. Like you've got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah. Come in. We get you in bed now. You sleep. Hair and glam. Ready, eight a.m. This seems staged, too, by the way. This doesn't it look real. Does. The guy's facing the camera. He's giving a little look to the other people like, yep, I'm the authority around here. She's going to do what I say. This doesn't look yeah. real. Dude, but every scene in this documentary, every single one, you could say that because yeah. she's talking to the camera. I mean, uh, she's making comments about her rough life. I mean, do we do that? Uh, I mean, we might be sad about something, but we don't start verbalizing. Oh, my God. C Casey, I know you've been through a lot, and I know you've come out on the other end a, a much better person, and, and God bless you. If there was Thank a you. doc about me, the last thing I would do is be like, and this is another reason why you should feel sorry for me. And here's another <laughs> thing that happened to me that was so terrible. I would just be talking about how great everything is, because that would seem like a lot more fun, wouldn't it? Totally, I don't know. hundred percent, man. No, I got gotcha. you. You know, you, nobody wants people to feel bad for you unless you are a loser. Just, <laughs> That's how losers I, think. I, I, I got to tell you, man, I think this whole thing came out. And uh, if I'm wrong, I'm very sorry. I will apologize to anyone. But I believe this thing came out was because her star was fading. Yeah. And for her to come up with something. And by the way, she talks about abuse. Never says anything that happened. Right. Um, yeah, we'll I get think into that. it's attention. We'll get into it. But just keep that in mind. I said it. What I think happened here, and I will show some evidence of this later on, is that there was this whole Me Too movement, and she wasn't a part of it. She didn't oh, get to be wow. one of the victims. And wow. yeah, and, and I got a clip of uh, David Letterman in a second. And, and so now she's like, Bad thing happened to me though too. Let's remember oh, that. Dude. Can we all remember dude, that? It. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I knew you would. I knew you would. <laughs> that is so that is so right on. Yeah. That that's that's what happened. She's like, "Why are all these people getting attention? I didn't get that type of attention." Uh, let's finish up this this clip though with her being <laughs> devastated so just to get up for such a great observation. For Herod Glam. <laughs> Yeah, in the morning. she tells her friend, I, I can't be ready at 8 a.m. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? 8 a.m.? It's 1230 right now, and I've been playing grab ass with, uh, <laughs> with people in, in, a, in a ball pit. There's no way it can be up in seven and a half hours. No way, guys. All right, so what we've just witnessed is Act 1. And Act 1 is the, hey, this is me. I'm Paris. I'm jet setting around the world. I'm an influencer. Everyone loves me. And now this is the turning point in the doc 
where it turns into woe is me poor poor paris this is a longer poor, poor, clip pitiful me yeah this this is a longer clip stop me anytime you want kc no, if you we, have we, anything we got, we got to put a a, a, a a restriction on this if uh if you don't want to throw up and you don't have douche chills i would uh <laughs> just just watch the first part again all right man so now she's back in the hotel room yep wake refreshed Alpha. yeah She's drinking something that I think you drink for hangovers, wake refreshed or something. Or is it like one of those uh, vitamin things? Or yeah, something like, like these that. Like these little bottles. We don't know what it is. And yeah. we're not saying it's alcohol. We don't know what it is. No, I don't think it's alcohol. I think it's something so that she wakes up feeling okay. Is she roofing herself? <laughs> Maybe. In my dreams. <laughs> I think it's a real problem. I never wake so this is where she's getting into her, her night terrors that have plagued her it. since she was a teenager. Refreshed. Hey, can you stop that for a second, Bob? Yeah, of course. Hey, Comment? so I, I, want you, uh, I want everyone to see that while she's taking these little bottles of, uh, uh, of vitamins or whatever it may be, um, she's talking to the camera right and it's supposed to be in the middle of night yep. she's in this huge suite with uh, a bed that oh my god i bet i could sleep there for uh, probably a week because oh, it looks so comfortable it looks amazing the lights are in the back it just it looks incredible yeah and she's talking to people not uh, not just uh, muttering to herself sorry but no that's a really good observation here because we're supposed to believe that this is a candid shot of her back in her hotel room. This is what Being she real? goes through while she's on the road. And it's just, oh, I can't get to sleep. And meanwhile, <laughs> she's still wearing a very fancy outfit, from what I can tell. <laughs> she's talking to producers. There's cameramen in the room. They're getting multiple shots, multiple yeah, yeah. angles. You got a four, a four camera shoot here. Your <laughs> hair is, is perfect. Her hair is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> her makeup is still on. Her makeup is still perfect. Now she's scrolling on her phone. Paris, if you want to get to sleep, put the phone down, honey. That's my advice to you. Totally. If you want to go to sleep, why are you screwing with your phone? Why are the lights still on? The cameraman's still shooting. It's 2 a.m. She's staring at her phone while sitting in bed. <laughs> this is the this is the woe is me. Oh my god. How much eye makeup does she have on right there? Uh, enough to uh, to help the uh, Botox settle in. Enough to slow I, I a car down. I don't know that to be true. That's... I don't know that to be true. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm so tired. I'm just literally, my, my mind is going through what the upcoming months are, and it's nonstop. So this is one of the other themes throughout this, is how busy she is. It's just, she's just nonstop. She just can't turn it off. Hey, hey, what, what's going through her mind, you, do you think? What, what is bothering her so much? What, what has that much pressure on her mind? Well, I mean, she's got so much coming up. She's got oh, so many gigs, so much, so much happening. I mean, I know she can't wear the same thing twice. <laughs> Adoring fans all over the world who want to throw themselves at her. And she's got three retarded people downstairs that are waiting for her to get <laughs> travel all around the world, and I've seen nothing except hotel room, club, stores. I don't even know who I am sometimes. And, and, and a pet frog that's in your throat. <laughs> don't forget about that guy. <laughs> yeah, this is where she starts with her. I am not who I people think I am. This is not the real me. It's going to be hard, but I will be quiet through this whole thing okay. because you need to hear it. Yeah, everyone. this is important. I'm always kind of putting on this, you know, facade or just like happy, perfect life. Just had this plan and then created this brand and this persona and this character and... I've been stuck with her ever since. And like, I didn't used to be that way. So, she's crying now. Yeah. Yeah. This is enraging. So, at, at, at what what age did you figure out that you were gonna 
uh, put out this sex video, which uh, you would make uh, millions of dollars with uh, an ex-boyfriend. And then once that was the worst thing that ever happened to you, why would you put three more out? <laughs> yeah, right. That's a good point. That makes a lot of sense. I like that she says, you know, I, I put on this facade that I'm I'm just a happy person enjoying my life. We all are! <laughs> That's called life! That's specifically what we're all doing, Paris. <laughs> what, what facade, though? I what, know. what facade is it? Is it... Is it um, the the facade that she's a business person? Is it the facade that uh, she treats her fans uh, terrifically, or is right. it the facade that she's miserable? Yep. Or or it's the other one too, where they talk about a little bit when she was on the reality show, The Simple Wife. She was playing a character pretending to be so dumb and so out of it. She at one point. They're like, oh, we bought that at Walmart. She's like, what's that? A store with walls? You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, Paris Hilton knows what a fucking Walmart is. This is oh not fooling gosh. anyone. But Oh, Lord. But yeah, so there's a lot of different characters that are going on here. Let's get into the nightmares because this is some more animation to really oh, yeah, uh, really drive it home. Bad. It's It's brutal. <laughs> I have horrible insomnia. I'm scared to go to bed at night. I always have this recurring nightmare no matter what I do I'm in bed and these two people come into my room and you see beautiful in the, in the reactive <laughs> yeah I know I'm lying in bed I'm a perfect 10 <laughs> Say, do you want this to happen the easy way or the hard way? I'm trying to just run. So this is this reoccurring. She's afraid to go to sleep because she has this dream every single night. That this is this terrible thing. And I got to tell you, KC, I used to be a short order cook at a restaurant. And I would have this dream where there were just too many tickets up and I just couldn't get all the food cooked. And I had, this was a reoccurring dream that I had, but I never was. And I was like, I can't go to bed tonight. There's too many tickets. There's too many tickets. Yeah, you mean you like everyone who had a job and had stress yes. uh, t tomorrow. Oh my God. I got this. I got the TCB papers coming out uh, and, uh, at the office space. I don't know about that. I, I got so much to do tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to, I'm nervous, uh, but nowhere in that clip, did she ever say anything about being physically or sexually abused? Not yet. Okay. No. I just wanted to bring that to okay. you. All right. So that's why uh, I'm a little suspect here and we'll get into it, but that's a great point. Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe she does have this crazy nightmare every single night. It sounds ridiculous, but I, who am I to say, but it's not like we don't all have stress dreams. We all have, we all go through this. There was this one dream I had. I forgot to study for the test, Casey. I was like, fuck, I get that one a lot the too. test is today? Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. I, get, I, I, I also get this one where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, in a Bukkake film with Rip Taylor and Gary Shandling, <laughs> and no one will let me leave the room. Don't it's, we all? It happens. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> The problem is the confetti sticks on your face. You can't get it off. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you turn me into one of them, uh, uh, one of them uh, coating things with, with the, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> paper mache, is that what you're thinking of? <laughs> turns, into well turns into paper mache. Or... Oh, this Michelle. is her. So this is Magic her now. Show. Uh, oh, okay, so this is her now. Uh, we're looking at 6 a.m. after she just had a, a very rough night with cameramen in her room until 3 a.m. And uh, and now she's getting her hair done. She's being pampered, and she's so pouty about it. Oh, uh, is she on her phone? I oh, yeah. I slept like three hours. A nightmare. I was like, felt so real. I was just screaming and crying and like telling people someone to help me and Imagine having a life that's so amazing, Casey, that you have to go on a documentary and say, you know how tough my life is? I had a bad dream last night. 
<laughs> That's how tough my life is. I had a really, really bad dream just last night. <laughs> my, my wife was uh, was screaming for craft services. She wanted to pick up. <laughs> and it's real. Just thinking about it today, I don't really know many genuine people. I, I bet that's true. Besides, like, my fans, like... <laughs> you said your fans! <laughs> Polina and Alex, like, when they talk to me, it's like, not even, like, my real friends would say that. But can they care for you? Can they care for me? What do you mean? Is that enough? <laughs> Poor crying. She's just not getting the support that she needs from her friends. Only her fans are down to earth enough for her. But I, I gotta know what are they fans of? Well, this is the other thing I think is funny in this documentary is so she's constantly on her phone, and every now and then they'll show you what she's doing on her phone. And she claims to be this businesswoman who has 28 product lines and so much going on. Is she, is she setting up meetings? Is she responding to messages and email? Nope. She's on Instagram every fucking time. And, and, and who is she looking at? Herself. There it is. She's putting filters exactly. on herself. <laughs> She's putting out posts of herself. Look, last I look, you don't run a business that way. You don't look at pictures of yourself. No, I'm, Jeff Bezos might do that because he's a lunatic, but most CEOs don't run a business that way. <laughs> Could you imagine a doc with De Jeff Bezos and he's crying? He's like, I got to go in my rocket tomorrow. <laughs> Didn't get a lot of sleep, though. Kind of concerned. <laughs> gonna, go to the, gonna go to outer space. Yeah. Oh, my God. I brought the wrong cowboy hat. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> You're canceled. I'm canceled. Uh, just for just for that. Sorry. Okay. Oh so my God, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> so stupid. So now we're gonna talk to her sister Nikki, and Nikki is the one who's a little bit more down to earth than Paris. Hey, let me ask you a question before you get there. Yeah. Um, maybe I should ask you after this, but no, no. Let me ask you before. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you think that she supports uh, Nikki or, or not Nikki? Uh, pa uh, Paris. Do you think that she's in support, or do you think? that she's kind of using this whole thing as a way to kind of stick it to her and say, hey, you know what, uh, you know, she's kind of a loser and I'm uh, I'm kind of the successful one. Yeah, it's interesting because Nikki does not put herself out there very much. She says that right at the very beginning. She's like, I never do interviews. I don't like to talk to people, blah, blah, blah. So I do think that you might be onto something there. There's a little bit of Nikki just going like, yeah, you're kind of being an idiot. I... I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, you could just settle down and calm down and life would be better. That's what I did. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I want you just to, when we play these clips, I want you just to keep in back of your mind and, and for the listeners too, um, think about this tone and yeah. tell me if you think it's a, it's a, a little bit kind of uh, giving them the business. So what Nikki is telling Paris here, because Paris is woe is me Paris now. So yeah. what Nikki is telling her here is, why don't you take a vacation? <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Hey, hey, okay. Paris. I know, I know you got a lot going on. You're very stressed out. <laughs> Tell you what, you have $500 million in the bank. Take a portion of that and head out to Hawaii and just enjoy yourself. And this is, uh, this is a fun like back. Anyone would say. Anybody yeah, would say that, right? yeah, this is a fun back and forth. <laughs> when do you bounce? Tonight. What were you here? 72 hours? What is that? Thursday. Yeah. I speak to you. You say you're going to bed. Then I'll wake up and I'll see you posting an Instagram at like 6 a.m. And I know you haven't slept. I can't sleep. Why? My mind won't stop moving. You need to go on a vacation. I've told you this for 15 years. You've never listened in the 15 years. I haven't went on a vacation. Go to Hawaii with no phone. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And just chill. Yeah. I can't. This, this, this Why? Is the best. Because the schedule is too busy. I haven't been on a vacation and... Because you're greedy and you won't turn greedy. down a check. I just, I love making money. All right, so I want to point something out here. Please. So, Nikki Hilton is married to James Rothschild. 
Isn't that like back in Illuminati stuff? Yes! Are you familiar with the Rothschilds? <laughs> yes. they, they run the world, all right? These yes. fucking people. Yes. And Nikki's telling her sister, you're being greedy. You just oh you want God. too much money is the problem. Oh, is that right, Nikki Rothschild? Is it's that just what my problem is? These fucking assholes. I hate everyone. It's so sick. It's, it's so <laughs> sick, and it's so wrong. And here, uh, Nikki is telling her, just like uh, any family member would tell someone who's a little bit down, hey, just take, you know, go to Hawaii, you know? Turn just your, leave phone your phone off. off. Just turn Please your phone go off. go to Hawaii. Just oh, go- because we can all afford that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, so, okay, so these people are very rich, so they, they can talk like that. But isn't that interesting that she recognizes what the issues are? <laughs> so Paris says, I'm, I'm just so busy. Well, you control your schedule. Wow. That's how schedules work. And then she says, well, go somewhere and stop looking at your phone. And really, that, that's, that's, the prob- best, that's the best advice ever. Yes. I mean, literally, that would probably solve all of her problems. And Paris Good says, Stratford, PA, don't bring your phone. <laughs> and Paris says, no, I can't do it. And th- another conversation that happens here that I don't have a clip of is she says, I really want to have a family and I hope I have a girl first. I want to name her London. <laughs> Which I'm like, oh, Paris, don't say that oh out loud. Oh my God, how much can you love oneself? I know, it's so stupid. But then she goes, <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that until I make my first $1 billion. That's her goal in life. It's to make, And then she can settle down. After she's made $1 billion, then she can settle down and then she'll be content with just living a life. Uh, how about just ask uh, uh, grandpa or great grandpa and uh, you got it. And now you can go and get rid of the demons that you have. You can go to Hawaii and you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, or Casey, or try to live off the $627 million you have already. No, that's and the, just enjoy on. your life with that. Come on. I, I don't know. Come I'm on. Look, out there. We don't want to be cruel to her. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's not a lot of money to live off of. I mean, she could have her own island. I, I, I'm just saying, you can have a pretty decent life with that amount of bankroll. All right, let's oh get back God. into the woe is me. Remember, this is all being done by Paris and Paris's team. So this is what I was talking about where it's like, where was my Me Too movement or moment? <laughs> and this is uh, after the sex tape comes out. These uh, sex videotapes are all over the Internet. How many of you have seen them? I've seen them. <laughs> She, I, I don't know, she seems like a very personable young woman. That was a private moment with a teenage girl. Not in her right headspace, but everyone was watching it and laughing like it's something funny. Oh, What's honey, funny? I was not laughing at your sex tape. I was pleasuring myself. <laughs> I did not think it was, I didn't find it funny at all. There was not at a single point was I laughing at Paris Hilton going down on a guy. That was not yeah. my reaction at all. Yeah, I remember being uh, very attractive and uh, thinking it was funny because guess what? Nobody is a hundred percent perfect. Some bad things are going to happen to people, and I don't like when it happens. But guess what? You got to roll with it. I mean, you know, some guys get laid off. Some women get laid off. That something happens to their kids. Something happens to their marriage, parents, whatever. You got taped having sex with someone you love. Well, it, where do you think most people would go? Well, all right. So honestly, I wouldn't want video of myself uh, making love with my significant other on the internet. But if it had to happen. And I was 19 at the time. That'd be a lot better than if it happened tomorrow. Got I mean, it. you got to look at the bright me? side of this stuff. You, you are never going to be hotter in your life than you were in that video. And she, she, she looks gorgeous <laughs> in it. She looks great. It yeah. could have been worse. Yeah, you know what? And I, I, I take that back. That was insensitive. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but there are people who have horrible, horrible things happen to them. Yeah. You're alive. That guy's alive. You made a lot of money off it. Um. Let's let, let's move on. I'll I'll, I'll say uh, I, I'll I'll say I'm sorry for that one. Well, it is interesting that she uses this to say she's lost trust in people. She can no longer trust people because this boyfriend videotaped it and ended up on the internet. And so then she shows this scene, which I believe is highly staged. We were talking before about how this none of this is actually real. 
Okay. Watch this scene. Spy cams. Hey, Why can, are you can doing I stop this? you for one sec? I'm doing. Hey, uh, when you are setting stuff up in your room or in your house, yeah, do you do a soliloquy? Oh, of course. Yeah, I, I always say out loud what I'm opening, why I'm opening it. <laughs> of course. Okay, I got you. Just wanted to know. That's all. <laughs> Everything's an unboxing video in my house. <laughs> <laughs> why are you doing this? I'm doing this because I have a new boyfriend who's going to be here. Oh, I'm gone. I do want to know what's happening when I'm not here. Put this on the phone so it's live. All right, so the reason why I pulled this clip, Casey, is because I call bullshit on this. There's no way she knows how to set up all of these spy kids. They're showing her like plugging in the camera and then putting in a thing and she's getting on her phone and getting on the app and trying to figure it out. And you see the A V guy? Yeah, right. <laughs> Bullshit. There's no fucking way in hell she knows how to man run any of this shit. Like I said, she's on her phone all day long, but only on Instagram. It's not right. like she knows how to do right. anything else. <laughs> I I she would most definitely hire people to set up cameras around her house. Of course. But can you imagine <laughs> if it came back and then you saw the new boyfriend having sex with, like, uh, a G uh, Jenner, uh, what is it, Caitlyn Jenner, uh, something like that, that would just be uh, totally abs abs absurd. Or maybe, uh, you know, like uh, Morton Downey Jr.'s corpse or something like that. Just something totally crazy. I, I, I don't know. Just a, These are just uh, fantasies. If, I those, if that had happened, people would be talking about this documentary. It would be like a huge hit. Yeah, yeah. Now they should have done that. Something. <laughs> All right. So let's get back into Woe Is Me, Paris. Paris moved to New York in 1996. She was a teenager going to high school. My sister and I were teenagers. We moved to New York. I was the new girl at school. I dealt with a lot of bullying and the girls kind of ganging up on me and being mean to me. So here's my issue. I didn't go to Paris's high school, but I did go to high school and the super hot rich people were never the people who were bullied in high school. They 100%. were the popular ones with friends. Yeah, those are the people we we wanted to be. We right. didn't want to get our ass kicked and, and put our, our, our head down the toilet in third period. We wanted to be like them. And they do a shitty job of this narrative, too, because they're showing her high school photo. She looks gorgeous. All the photos <laughs> with her friends in high school, she's like the hottest one. And she's like, everyone was bullying me. No one accepted me. Everyone was trying to fuck you. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's no way that's true. Great point, man. Yeah, well, it's so stupid. You're right on that one, man. So then she transitions from that right into this nightlife that she had. And now when she was 13, 14, she got a fake ID, started going out every night and uh, and living it up. And this is her talking about that. This is this is how she became Paris Hilton. I think I just got addicted to the nightlife. I felt accepted. I just felt like, like the queen of the night. More animation. Became Paris. What's that Japanese? Uh, Finally. Yeah, I know the the animation stuff is a little jarring. It doesn't really fit in with everything else that's going on. It, it, it's a little uh, self uh, cel celebratory, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you think it puts her in a good light where she's like the yeah, coolest person little, in the world. <laughs> So she's talking about how she's going out every single night. Her mom is losing her mind. Her mom is literally up all night calling every nightclub asking if her 14-year-old daughter is there partying. Because you can't tell because she's got too much Botox you, and you don't know if she's upset or if she's happy. <laughs> yeah, the mom, I don't, the mom does not look her age. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, boy. So they're explaining that Paris is out of control. She's and this is a well-known thing about Paris Hilton. She was uh, just partying 
when she was still a very young child going to That's high what school. Kids do right? Not, not me. I wasn't going to fucking nightclubs when I was fourteen. Yeah. Are you kidding me? We couldn't. Me and you couldn't get in. <laughs> I'm not going to do into a nightclub. <laughs> me and you would be back at the end of the line. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know where to start. I wouldn't. I didn't even know how to order a drink back then. <laughs> Paris Hilton is doing blow in the bathroom with her friends. She's fourteen. Like I, that, I didn't live that life. I don't know that life. Yeah, so no, I, 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 I didn't either. But uh, I, I like to think that I could have gotten the uh, the back of the line at the Emerald Inn or something like that. I don't <laughs> well, know. Well, if people don't know this about uh, my friend Casey, is that uh, very handsome gentleman was uh, probably <laughs> a po- probably that. popular in high school. Would be my guess. Am I right about that? Well, uh, well, you know, my, my old man was a coach. He was a football coach, wrestling coach. Yep. So I, I was miserable. So I was cutting weight. Or uh, I, I wasn't allowed to go out, so um, I, I never got to do what Paris did. But it looks like fun, and uh, <laughs> you know, if uh, if the, the um, uh, what's that 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 woman uh, who looks like a cat with all the plastic surgery? I know it's not the same. Maybe they were friends. Maybe she would send that cat thing out. Uh, we uh, get the uh, get get Paris home. We something like that. I don't know if that happened, but um, are you, you talking know, about John Legend's wife? Yes. <laughs> the woman who looks like a cat. <laughs> that's really funny. Maybe they send her out to scare her. I don't know. Oh, that's fucking funny. But it didn't happen to me or, or you, that's for sure. That's for sure. So because Paris is out of control and they're telling her, Paris, you cannot go out anymore. And she's like, fuck you. They're living in a, the hotel there. And so she's just like sneaking out and going out and just doing her own thing. So eventually they have to do something about that. And so this is where they send her off to boarding school. I first sent her to an outdoor wilderness program. It's for teenage boys and girls needing a change of attitude and direction. There's all these places called emotional growth schools. The first place was in the middle of nowhere. We were building other camps, basically doing manual labor all day long. It was just constant yelling at like boot camp style. So I whispered to one of the girls, like, let's get out of here tonight. (sighs) She got away. We. So now there's more video of her and her friend running away. They're in the middle of nowhere. And Paris's brilliant plan is, let's get out of here. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Good luck with that. We ran through. What's that, buddy? I was going to say, is this before... Did she talk to us about the nightmares already? Yes. Yeah. This We're going in chronological, chronological order. So this is after okay. she's told us about the nightmares. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And and now we're going back to the, the trauma that she experienced. And this is, by the way, this is the crux of the whole thing. This is, this is the trauma getting and sent away. And this is not for everyone, guys. This is, you know, I know a lot of stuff bad goes on. This is not for everyone. Okay. We ran through cornfields, through mountains. The guys that worked at the camp grabbed us, and then we got back, and they literally just beat the hell out of us. And uh, oh my God. Beat the hell out of you? In front of everyone, just to let everyone know if you run away, this is what happens. I mean, and you put yourself- punching you in the face, really? You put yourself in danger. You ran away through cornfields and mountains. You probably would have died if they had not found you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they grabbed you, and they brought you back. They probably yelled at you. And yeah. Yeah, yeah prob- probably raised their voice a little bit, too, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's- and then they sent me to this other place, which was hell, too. And I ran away from there. She jumped down an entire flight of stairs. They shut down highways. They shut down the airport. I escaped from ascent. Cascade. <laughs> I know. She's like, catch me if you can in this thing. Like, you would think like she's the most amazing criminal of all time. <laughs> all of these emotional growth schools. All right. So this is the thing that I don't know. Paris realizes what she's putting out there. What she's telling us is that she cannot learn. They're trying to teach her something. You need to control yourself. You need discipline. You can't just do what Paris wants to do all the time. You're a kid. You got to learn how to live a life. And she's going, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Run away, run away, run away. So everything bad that happens to her from this point on 
is her own goddamn fault. Sorry totally. to use sorry 100%. to use the, the no, GD so, you're term. So there. true, man. Dude, that is exactly what this whole thing is about. I think uh, I watched this thing a million times, and maybe I I'm, maybe I fell asleep at a time or something. But <laughs> I felt this was the worst thing that ever happened to her, and this is why she can't have a relationship, and yes. this is why yep. she's she's uh, so uh, affected and everything like that because she was yelled at. And uh, the time where she talks about, uh, I, I don't think we've gotten it yet, so I'll, I'll save it. But I'm with you so far, buddy. Oh, yeah. So this is the peak, woe is me, Paris. I was sent away. My parents are the worst people. They sent me to this thing where I was supposed to just do labor and learn how to have some discipline and follow directions and rules. And I refused to do it. Even I'd, I'd put myself and my friend's life in peril. Because I refused to listen to anything. You know what? I'm going to fast forward now because I have to go to the part where they're talking about this uh, this final provo, this final boarding school they went to. Oh, that really okay. is the big problem here. But this, this now, this, uh, I don't know if uh, I can keep from crying on this one. <laughs> yeah, uh, this gets a little rough. Yeah, I, I, I hope you can keep me strong. So let's go. So this is the the documentarian. That's the Catwoman telling Paris's mom what happened. Did she tell you she was put into solitary? When you mean solitary, what do you mean? Solitary confinement, treating children like they're in a prison instead of a school. Are you serious? She's never told me that. So the mom didn't know. The way she was treated in this boarding school, she was put in solitary confinement like they would a prisoner. And the mom's going, what? She never told me that. And this is Paris telling us what happened here. And by the way, it's another animation because we really, want to, too. we really want to drive home what's happening here. Yeah. A lot of people were on suicide watch. And I was so scared that was going to happen to me. So eventually I found out a way to not take the pills. <laughs> how do you not take a pill, Casey? Do you know how to do that? <laughs> yeah, let, I, I will tell you everything that she's talking about uh, yeah. right here. And, and there's a bunch of it. So if you want, I, I can tell you right now. I'll keep it short. Okay. But uh, what she's talking about is whenever you're in a um, uh, any type of punishment where you have to um, do uh, solitary and they put you in solitary if you do something wrong if you um, it's discipline okay right and w with something like this if they put you in there for more than half of a day I mean it would really surprise me okay right. but what they do is they they say they'll strip you naked and they'll put you in solitary that's if that's only if you threaten suicide yeah okay and I'm Sure, that's what happened because some people think, oh, I get to go to the psych ward or something like that. But no, if you tell them, the, any of the uh, the jailers or uh, the CEOs, you say, I'm going to kill yourself. They strip you naked. They put you in, in a jail cell where everyone can see. And it's incredibly embarrassing. But you did it to yourself. Right. Because jail sucks. But you're not going to kill yourself. So they take away your shoelaces and everything like that. That's what she's talking about. And it's a bunch of bullshit. So th the way you just described that tells me that you've actually lived through much worse trauma than Paris Hilton has. I have. I was, I was in solitary in Alaska for 10 days. Jesus. I, 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 I Alaska is out. solitary confinement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? The food is pretty good. Man. I got to tell you. Really? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, but, you know, when you say those words... You, you think that you're going to be, oh, oh, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to help you because you want to kill yourself. You must be feeling real bad. Right. No, no, the worst thing is going to happen to you. So anyone listening, don't ever say you're going to kill yourself in a jail. And, <laughs> Solid and, advice and, from our buddy Casey. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's so true. And that's I guarantee you that's what she did. And that's why it's she, everything by the book. That's by the book. All right. So I'm going to start this one over. This, this is uh, the full clip of her reliving her trauma. A lot of people were on suicide watch. And I was so scared that was going to happen to me. So eventually, I found out a way to not take the pills. 
that everyone would tell on everyone, and they found a Kleenex with all of the pills in it. And I got in so much trouble for that. Solitary confinement. Like, something out of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. They'd make people take their clothes off and go in there, like, for 20 hours. I felt like I was going crazy. Someone was in the other room that was like in a straight jacket, screaming. Okay, <laughs> sure. It was just <laughs> freezing, I was starving. I was alone, I was scared. My parents were in New York. They didn't know. But I was so angry and so upset that I just, I hated them. All right, so this this seems a bit far fetched for me, and I don't. I mean, this is her truth, and I don't want to tell her what her truth is. Right, right. But right. she's in solid. This is a teenager in solitary confinement for twenty hours next to a person who's in a straitjacket, screaming bloody murder, murder the entire fucking day. I, okay, sure. You know what it was, man? I'm, I guarantee it was loss of privileges. Like, you know yeah. when you talk with kids yep. and, hey, if you're fresh to your teacher, you're going to take away a privilege, yep. meaning you can't watch TV as soon as you get home or, 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 or something like that. Um, but they don't, put, they don't take away your food if you're in solitary. That doesn't happen. They give you three squares a day. Doesn't ha- and this isn't even jail. This is not uh, jail. <laughs> this is not yeah. jail. These are, these are teenagers that we're talking about. But okay. Yeah, so she must have uh, you know, tried, to, tried to attack one of the, the, uh, the, the people there or something like that. What or maybe, saying, maybe she was just being cunty. I could see that. I could see yeah, Paris. I could see that too. A fifty-year-old yeah, Paris Hilton being a little cunty. Yeah. Oh, 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 you like that? You want to act like that to, to the CEOs <laughs> and to everybody? Okay, yeah. you'll go in this room for twenty hours. You won't like that. Yeah. And oh, but it's it's going to keep nightmares for for uh, for perpetu- per- perpetuity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get back to the fun stuff. Now we cut right. to a scene where she's going on vacation with her boyfriend. Oh, and by and, the way, they, yeah. if you didn't, oh, if they didn't take their medicine, it was called cheeking them, and you didn't get in trouble for throwing them away. You got in trouble for keeping them and selling them to other people. What kind of medicine is that? Is that like a sedative? Uh, whatever. Like everyone's taking different stuff. Some people are taking stuff to sleep. Some people are taking stuff to stay awake. And you would cheek it, and they'd open up your mouth. And uh, if they didn't see it, you could take it out later and you could sell it. You all of a sudden you had uh, some value. I am glad Mr. Armstrong is on the show with me today because (laughs) this guy has some authority on this. I'm just making shit up, but it sounds like you actually know what you're talking about, my friend. No, I do. Unfortunately, I do. Wow. uh, Look, I I, I don't take happiness in uh, someone being upset. But what she's talking about, there's there's a guy I'm sure that lives less than a half a mile away from me whose life is one uh one hundredth of hers so she needs to, to be lucky to have some gratitude for what she has okay that she is lacking gratitude that is a very good point if there's one thing i didn't see an ounce of in this doc it's gratitude. A Thank woman, you. A girl who's born into this wealthy family with everything she could possibly want. They were showing these old videos from Christmas where she's opening up like beautiful purses. And she's like, brat, whatever, and just chucking it. She's, she's such a little I fucking am. brat. She's yeah. such an asshole. <laughs> uh, all right. So finally, she's going to get some, uh, some R&R on vacation. Last vacation was probably when I was 15. Bullshit! <laughs> with my family. <laughs> it's just been nonstop work, and I felt like I needed to do this for myself. Now we've seen what work is. Yeah, we saw what kind of work in that fuck in that hotel. You were doing you were doing the work. We got it. <laughs> we've seen what what work what she means by all this work that she's doing. Or I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this vacation. Look at this. It's so beautiful. It's Mykonos. I love it here. But for some reason, it's hard for me to relax. It's still poor Paris. She's in fucking Mykonos on an island 
overlooking the uh, whatever that would be right there. What's what, what would, body of water would that be? I should have looked that up. <laughs> Carl, have you been to Mykonos? I've never been to Mykonos. I haven't too. It looks like fun, right? Looks nice. Looks pretty nice. Look, they're having a good time. They're in an infinity pool, looking out <laughs> at the water. It seems like they're doing pretty well. And she's going. I just had to finally take a vacation. I haven't taken one since I was fifteen. Oh yeah, from, from all the hard work I've been doing, you know, oh, all the hard work. Yeah, um, going from hotel to hotel and videotape to videotape. So you were I asking, uh, you asked multiple times, why is she famous? What, what would, why would someone yeah. be a fan of hers? Well, I will tell you, it's because she's an amazing DJ. And actually, this is true. Um, she is the highest paid DJ on the planet. I think she makes a million dollars for each appearance that she does DJing. So if you want to hire her for your club, get ready to shill out uh, seven figures for it. Now, uh, DJ, what I saw watching this yeah. is she put a playlist together on an Apple computer. Don't get ahead of me, sir. Sorry. Do, do not get ahead of me. Sorry. This is her complaining that people don't think that she's an amazing DJ with great skills. Okay. When I'm playing, that's my time. Like when I have fun. There's nothing like it. People talk shit and say that I'm not DJing live. At my first concert in Brazil for 30,000 people, the guy came up for one second just to turn the volume, and that picture just went viral. It was like Paris wasn't DJing, <laughs> this guy was doing it. So I really have to like prove. Oh, by the way, I don't think either of those people are doing anything. Myself, especially being a woman in this industry as well, because it's like a boy's world. Oh, and then she has to pull the, oh, well, I'm a woman. That's oh. why people don't think I can DJ very well. And I don't think that's the reason. I think it's because she's not doing anything. Who has the money to DJ, <laughs> uh, to press play? Uh, I can do that now for, for, for Chris and my cats. No one's paying me. Well, maybe you made some bad decisions in life, Casey, because I think you might be right. this seems like a pretty good gig. <laughs> I want to play you. On. This is her at the Tomorrowland Festival. And you said she's the best ever? No, no, no. I said that she's the highest paid. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> best ever? No. She's uh, not Skrillex, right. my friend. This is Paris Hilton oh, we're so talking about. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got her MacBook Pro that she's loaded up with her song list, and then she just hits play on that. She puts her fingers on knobs from time to time, I saw, which is cute. That's cute, right? I'm sure she's EQing the fuck out of it. Oh, this part, I got to bring the bass all the way up, I'm sure. I'm sure she knows everything about music. So oh, yeah. this is a fun scene. They're at the Tomorrowland Festival. She's all excited. This is a, by the way, I just spoiler her. This is a huge festival, and you see Paris get up in front of these people. You're like, Jesus fucking Christ, really? This is her this, life? Why? Why? This is so so uncomfortable, and I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but this is, uh, so this is a longer clip, and stop me anytime you want again, but she's getting into a fight with her drunk boyfriend. Oh, my God. The, her drunk German boyfriend is upset that she spent so much time talking to everyone but him at this festival because she's getting pulled in every different direction. And so he's throwing a little temper tantrum and she's freaking out because she's on her way to the stage while he's pestering her. Uh, let's pick stop. up. I love you. Please stop. Please stop. Please. No, don't love me. I'm begging you. Stop. I started four minutes. Please. I started three minutes. Do not ruin my set. Can I have his f***ing bracelets cut off? Can we cut his bracelets off? Can we cut his f***ing bracelets off? So now she's telling her, her handlers, get him the fuck out of here. He's done. <laughs> this guy is done, which is hilarious. Thing you think to do with the value she puts on her relationships. Uh, if one thing goes wrong, she's on to the next thing in a second. Do, well, you, do you think I'm, I'm just, uh, just kind of... Uh, uh, you I'll give you my of... take on this because she obviously Please. wants to show this as my boyfriend's being a jerk and I can't deal with him. And I think that the way that this is painted, the guy probably is a problem. He seems like a, a huge pain in the he, ass. He looks like a jealous jerk here, right? Yes. But at the same time, and I, the way that I live my life is I feel like everything that happens to me, I deserve. And so I try to learn from the every experience that I have, especially negative ones. And so... When Paris has each boyfriend, she goes through like she was engaged in 2018 and that didn't work out. And every guy's trying to control her and every guy, blah, 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 blah. uh, I have clips where she gets beaten and stuff. It's like, 
you have to start making different decisions in life, Han. Yeah. You're attracting this into your world, or you're making people nuts. You might be making people around you crazy. That's all, another mm-hmm. possibility. All right. This reminds me of Courtney Love backstage, but uh, uh, it's a whole other story. <laughs> it's a whole other story. It's ruining my entire set. Okay. Okay, this is the part that made me very angry as a musician, as someone who's learned how to play music and perform it and write it. This is the part that pisses me off. Look at the crowd she is performing in front of. Holy shit! Now she gets up behind this giant board. And you can see, Casey, there's a, multiple turntables. There's all this DJ gear. She's using none of it. She has her MacBook Pro. She's hitting play on her set li- or a playlist on her MacBook. That's so true. I didn't. I didn't put that together. Yeah, that look, is at so that, true. look at all that. Look at all that gear. She's playing from the computer. There's real DJs who are playing the show. Obviously, look at this. And oh she gets up God. there. And now watch as she pretends she's doing stuff. All right, so this is where she's twisting knobs, but she's not. She's not even moving the knob. She just has her hand on it. She's just holding. She's holding the knob. Good job, Ferris. There's no way this level is gonna change. I'm gonna hold it right here. Oh my god! And, and I can tell you, all right, uh, if I could uh, focus in here, um, those knobs yeah. uh, is not what is gonna play a song. <laughs> no, nope. those knobs are are, are not even. Uh, maybe they might give a little treble, maybe a, a little bass, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But those knobs are not going to do anything that those people out there need to hear. No, correct. I could go. I could put my cat on top of that board, and it wouldn't change what anybody out there hears. It's not going to affect <laughs> this much at all. Up. What's that? And she's taped up, and she's got gloves on. What is going on here? <laughs> I know. She's a rock star. I will say that's my favorite scene. If I if I have to pick a favorite in this train wreck of a doc, you know, uh, the guy. Okay, I the guy's a douche. He's a douche. Right? <laughs> who, no matter who it is, you don't screw with somebody who is about to do something that they love, even if they don't do anything. Right. Uh, whatever it is, you don't take that away from them because you're so selfish and whatever. So uh, she was right to take that guy away. But to, how does this end? I don't, I don't like to uh, start fights at any time. But if you're going to start a fight with your significant other, do it at home. Yeah. Never. Yeah, not, not when you're about to play a gig or do a show. I, I mean, even just having dinner or drinks with friends. Like, I don't care what you're doing. Don't start a fight. Like, if, if you have your own issue going on, walk away. Let, let the person do what they're doing. Yeah, mm. I, I found that guy to be obnoxious. So I pulled this quick clip just because of the vocal fry. I just okay. let's just listen to Paris talk. I don't know if my nightmares will ever go away, but I do know that there's probably hundreds of thousands of kids who are going through the same thing right now. And maybe if I can help stop their nightmares, it will help me stop mine. So profound. You know oh, when she's pr- coming back to her. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. If I can fix my issues, maybe it'll fix everyone else's. That's how that works. So you know when she's trying to do the oh my god, my life is so hard. That's when the vocal fry comes on. Because she can talk normal. We've been listening to a bunch of stuff yeah, where she's yeah. talking like a normal person. And then when she goes, 
And I just keep having these nightmares, and my life is so hard. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you say so. <laughs> no, it, it, and it's it, it's so true. It's like uh, there was one point in this where she was talking to the sister. The sister is uh, uh, she she held up a little bit better, but um, she made sure in the beginning. She goes, "I don't do this stuff." So telling us the audience that she doesn't want anything to do with fame, right? So right. she's cooler than that. Yep. And every single scene, she just uh, tears her down and tells her. You know, why don't you have kids like me? Mm -hmm. Why don't you, um, uh, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you go to Hawaii? Um, and it's all about her making money. And this is the most vapid, uh, the most uh, egocentrical, the most. Um... Imagine that a Paris Hilton documentary that's <laughs> that's uh, vapid. An ego driven. Yeah. Who would have guessed? Yeah, but, but but I I think they tried to not put her that way. Oh, I know. But, That's the best part, right? It's not like you and I made this doc. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> right. did I, hey, no. Did we? Did we? Did we screw with any of the clips? Not at all. Not at we, all. We, we just gave it exactly what it was, yeah. and it made her look worse. So it, there's a fun scene in here that I didn't pull where they're Nikki and Paris are talking, and there's another woman there. I don't know who she is, and they're talking about Paris getting sent off to this boarding school. And Nikki says, oh, yeah, I used to tell on you because she's the younger sister. I used to tattle on you to mom and dad all the time. And Perry goes, oh, so it's your fault. And Nikki goes, no, you were a really bad kid. Like She <laughs> says that like right to her face. Like, no, Paris, what you were doing was wrong and you were endangering yourself. We thought you were going to die. Mm -hmm. And so we told on you. And that's why, like, never once did she connect these dots like, oh, I was the problem. The first place she went to where they were out in the wilderness and enjoying the great outdoors and maybe they had to saw through some wood. If she hadn't run away from that place, she never would have been in solitary confinement when she wasn't <laughs> eating her pills a yep. month later. Like she never, yeah. she never comes to that conclusion. So now she's with, this is the big conclusion of this. She's okay. reunited with a few of the people who also went to this boarding school and this trauma and they're reliving the trauma they went through and, now we are introduced to Jessica Pike, who was Paris's best friend at this boarding school. Let's okay. look at her, and then I have a comment. I don't think I met your, your best friend there, but we did find her, Jessica. Jessica. She was such a badass. <laughs> I ended up in an abusive relationship after I left Provo. I'm thinking maybe, like, being in places where they're abusive to you would make you think that that's a normal way to be. All right, here's my guess on this one. You ready, Casey? Yeah, yeah. Jessica Pike wasn't born into a $350 million family. Just, Thank you. Just guessing. Thank just throwing it out there. There's a possibility. 100%. Either that or somehow she was coached by uh, Khabib Namegamendov uh, or Conor McGregor for the, uh, <laughs> for the uh, 628. But, dude, I, that was a joke. But you are 100% on. This is how someone who is normal, yes. who's me and you, who's yep. people watching this stuff. Hey, when bad stuff happens and, um, you know, you got to take responsibility for it. This this person, I, I assume I haven't seen this, but I, I, I'm sure that she did. Well, it's interesting that they are trying to blame everything on the school that they went to. And this is what I was alluding to earlier, where Paris is talking about all the abusive relationships that she's been in. You look hideous. I guess she's looking at photos I've of herself been on the a computer. Lot of relationships with people. <laughs> they just get so. Every time she's looking at a screen, it's, it's a photo of herself <laughs> on the phone, on the computer, everything. It's just her. <laughs> That's amazing. Controlling and get so angry that they become physical. We just got in an argument. I was trying to leave his house, and he just got really mad. Just, just grabbing me and pulling me. So I am not a fan of domestic violence. I find that terrible. But I would not blame Provo for the fact that you were abused by five guys in different relationships in your life, Paris. That's what she's she's that's what this whole thing is for. Yes. Let me tell you what I think this is for, man. Yep. I think this is 
uh, no one's really talking about her anymore. Yes. And for someone who has fame and to let go of fame, it's a tough thing mm -hmm. because you get a special treatment and, you know, you get uh, you're privy to a lot of things. On a lot of other people aren't. And someone who based their life on taking a selfie and all of a sudden nobody cares anymore, you will probably come up with a story about being uh, yeah. uh, abused. But do you notice she never says anything about being sexually abused? It's some abuse she doesn't ever tell us about. Well, it's just let me fast for forward. Me. Let, me, let me fast forward to that then because she's finally telling her mom about the abuses that were going on at this school. Now, she's never had this conversation with her mom before, which is weird, but okay. She's finally telling her. And listen to the way she explains the abuse that happened. And I, I have a comment on it. And we're all going to post it and basically raise awareness. Sorry. Verbally and emotionally, physically abused me. Mm -hmm. Just... Screaming at me all the time. Right. Strangling, locking me in a room. So if you're going to claim that you were abused at this school and she goes, wait, you were physically abused? She goes, yeah, they were screaming at me all the time. And the mom goes, yeah, you deserve to be screamed at. You're a fucking <laughs> asshole. And then she goes, and they strangled me too. Like that was like out of nowhere. There, nowhere else they talk about strangling. That was the first time I was brought. It wasn't in the animation. That was the first time. All of a sudden she talked to her about. She's like, and they strangled me. That sounds good, right? Why not? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, what you're saying is true, but you got to realize that this probably happened back in the '70s, right? And it was a little bit different. I am not condoning it, but back in the '70s, it was different. I mean, if you did something wrong, you know, you got the wooden spoon. You got uh, something hold on, else. Hold on, and, Casey. Parasol's not that old. This was the '90s we're talking about. Oh. This was the late well, maybe 90s. Maybe she deserved it then. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. But look, but that's how, you know, that's a, some kids grow up that way. Most people grow up that way. If you screw up, you got to be responsible for it. Either you're going to get your, you're, you're going to get yelled at, uh, you're going to get grounded. Something's going to happen. Um, you know, I, I, if she got touched, uh, that's uh, not cool. And she I never do says not, that. She never, she says, never that. says it, right? Yeah, right. No. She, she so, says that they were abusive and there's solitary confinement and they made her take pills she didn't want to take. And I don't know. Yeah. Well, if, if you know, if you're going to do things that are going to harm other people and you're not following in the rules, yeah, you're going to get disciplined. Well, when, they, sorry, when they all Paris. get together, all the, the women get together who are all part of this school and they, they do this round robin and they talk about what happened to them. The worst thing they say is, yeah, there was girls I knew who had blah, blah, blah happen to them. Like, they, none of them can actually come up with a single story where they all go, yep, I remember that. Can, uh, we, sit them, can we sit them down and watch them uh, show um, that island that uh, Jeffrey Epstein took these women to? That is disgusting, and that is something that is uh, inhuman. I don't want, I mean, that's I don't want to compare that's horrible. I don't want to compare everything to what Jeffrey Epstein did. Otherwise none of us have suffered any trauma at all. <laughs> well, that's trauma. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right? Uh this is a fun little clip that I have right here. So this is going back to Jessica, her best friend, and I just find this to be hilarious what comes out of Paris's mouth here. How's everyone else been? I'm a little shy. So am I. I think that place made me shy. <laughs> I'm a little shy, Paris. Me too. I mean, I'm one of the most shy people you ever meet. She's taking photos of herself for 16 hours a day, and I'm not even exaggerating. At one point, she goes, "Yeah, but this app says I've been on it for 16 hours. 16 hours a day, she's taking photos of herself. She's <laughs> DJing in front of 50,000 people, and this woman goes, "Ah, uh, I don't even want to be here. I'm kind of shy." She goes, "Me too." Yeah, me too. I'm shy. I'm, I'm shy. shy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, first, I'm glad you pulled that. That was awesome. You can claim to be a lot of things, but shy. That's a that's I'm a shy. silly one. Jeez, man. Okay. Wow. Dude, okay. I I, I uh, I'm so happy that uh, we got to we got to do this. So cool, man. Do you have time? I got just a couple more things. Oh, Yo, you got more? Yeah, I got a couple more things that I yeah, want to get to. Yeah, dude. I, I thought you would tell me that was the last one. Yeah, totally, dude. Um, all right, so this is, a, again, talking to her mom and saying that she was going through, because the mom's going, holy shit, this was all happening to you? I didn't even know about this. And Paris explains that she couldn't tell her mom about it. She was trying to look like Carrot Top. <laughs> Can I 
but I couldn't tell you guys because every time I tried, I would get punished by them. Or they would say, we're just gonna tell your parents you're a liar and they're not gonna believe you. And she couldn't tell them because she would be punished by them. How about when you left? Could you have told her after <laughs> yeah. you left? You know, like when you're 18 and you're not going to go back there ever again? You could have brought up, by the way, they were strangling me. You have to wait 22 years. <laughs> and, and, dude, was there a pencil and a pad? Uh, <laughs> or, 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 or maybe they were looking at that, too. You never know. I don't know. But that is just so ridiculous. All right, Casey, this is what I've been gearing up for this whole time. My favorite clip that i have did you get to the very end of this documentary i did i did okay I did. it cuts to the credit scene and i could not believe the song they picked for the credits are you familiar with a song called girls just want to have fun by cindy law yeah <laughs> holy shit I, I don't even if i if i set it up anymore it'll ruin it i just i just have to play this I'll just be like this forever. <laughs> Come home in the morning light. And my mother says, when you gonna live your life right? Oh, mother dear, we're not the fortunate ones. And girls, they want to have fun. An emotional version of girls just want to have fun? <laughs> What the fuck is that about? It sounds like the like an intervention music. You ever watch the show Intervention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they always have that like really pulling at the heartstrings, like, oh my god, I'm gonna get my life right now. I gotta I gotta do this for my my family and my loved ones. And this is like, and girls just wanna have fun. Carl, they tried the whole time to make me care and to make me uh, shed a tear about this is a real person. Yeah. But you just made it worse. You, you just made, made it, it worse. much worse. You're so entitled. And now I have to play the chorus because this is where they really drive home. This song is <laughs> sappy. This is the sappiest version of Girls. There are Cindy Lauper songs you could have played sappy. This is not the one. This is not the one that works. This is so funny. That's all they Holy shit, oh that's... Oh my god. I can't believe that exists. I hope it was made I, just for this documentary because it's the funniest I thing I've ever heard. I would like it to be a goof. <laughs> that's what I would put in a show as a goof. A I mean, it's, it's, it's how do you do sentimental that? Sentimental girls how you, just want to have do you, fun. Do you think we're that dumb? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a, a movie that ends with, we're not going to take it. <laughs> no, we're not going to take it. Like you couldn't have picked the worst song to try to make I, sappy. That's so stupid. I, I, I want to make a, a film about, uh, you know, Dahmer or something like that and play that police song real slow at the end. You know, <laughs> I'll be watching you, you know, every every breath you take. Like in a real creepy voice. I'll be watching you. And no, no music in the back. Just would, a voice. That would actually work. Yeah, it would be great. <laughs> that would actually work. All or, right, or, KC, or, what or, have or, we or done today? Did crime. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. It was so much fun, man. We've thank done you it for all. doing that with us. That was, that was a blast, wasn't it? That was a lot of fun, man. I, I hope I, it turned uh, out okay. I, I, yeah, me too, man. I, I, <laughs> you did a great job with those clips. Thank you so much. Thank you to uh, uh, my producer on my side uh, over here, Mr. Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, buddy. Um, can, uh, can I just tell you, uh, maxmuscle.com? Oh, yeah, please plug your stuff. I definitely do that. Yeah, I, I'm taking this stuff. Uh, all of a sudden, you just feel tighter. It's protein. It's called um, uh, uh, Pana 4. It's got uh, all the different uh, uh, weight um, concentrates. It's a protein powder. Go to maxmuscle.com. Tom Rogers is the man. He'll hook you up. Thank you so much, my awesome. man. Awesome. And can people find you? Do you have a radio show or podcast people can find you at? Yeah, people, they can go to uh, WMAPradio.com, and uh, you can email me, Casey, at WMAPradio.com. I'll get back to you. And uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you, man. I'm a big fan of yours, yeah. and I, I really thank you for letting me on and uh, for sharing this uh, fun time with me. 
Thanks for reaching out. I appreciate that you did that kind of out of the blue. It's fucking awesome. I had a blast. Me too. And uh, hopefully we do it again soon. No doubt. No doubt. All right, buddy. Thank you so much, Carl.